Hi everyone, today at Top Jeu, I'm gonna talk to you about 10 games, 10 games that use emotion to teach, to have fun. Um, basically, there is 10 that I found that I had the chance to have with me, two of them I couldn't, so I just wanted to uh, tell you those two because if you want to explore and, and try to find more emotion games that you want for your kids, maybe you can have a look at those two. The first one is Loto des Emotions from Placot. And the second one is Association, my first game, Emotion, from uh, Gladius. So you can have a look and maybe you will find what you need on those two games. Today I'm going to present you 10 games. They are not, it, it, this is not a top 10. Uh, it's just 10 games that I found for um, helping kids with their emotions. Uh, for me, it's something new <laughs> because as a parent, I never uh, felt the need of having a game to teach my kids emotion, but I guess for some of you it's really important, it's useful. So I told myself maybe I'm gonna present you what I found and then you can see if you, you need to go get them. <laughs> so the game is Seek and Find from Placut. Uh, it's a game where you have to find items on the board. So you have four boards, you have to find the emotion and sometimes you have to find the item that had the emotion like the, the result of why the child is sad or why he's happy and also you also have to find some element like i like i say like like may, maybe um a dog or a friend that is sad or ice cream that fell so at least the kid yes you have to find the emotion plus you have to find the reason for the emotion so it's a good way to talk about why things happen and for what. I really love the graphic on this one. It's really clear when the child is sad, happy, or, or any other emotion. And there's only five emotions represented in this game. I found it's very, very simple, and I really love the simplicity. However, I think these type of game, uh, find and seek, I think you can use it maybe four, five, six times, and I think that's it after that. The child know where is the, um, the item and maybe there's no fun anymore. But I think for an introduction game and, and to play once or twice, I think that's perfectly fine. I, I really love uh, the graphic and the emotion on that game. So the second game I wanted to talk to you about is Feelings. Uh, feelings, it's a game for older kids, I think seven, eight, nine years old, because it's more complex, there's more cards. And this game is really a build like a game and not like a tool to learn your emotion. It's really a game where you're trying to find out what the other players would feel in a certain situation and also how you would feel in a certain situation and then you have to bet okay I think this one is gonna feel sad or this one is gonna feel happy so it's a more complex game and I think it's built like this I'm not sure if it's a fun game in that sense like yeah let's play emotions or let's try to figure out I think it's more like a party a game where you can have fun trying oh, what you would do in that situation and have fun with your friends uh, I don't think it's very serious in that sense, it's just really a fun game and it's not meant to teach uh, anybody. Uh, what you do is just, uh, you pick up a card and you read what's the situation, let's say you have a bad mark in school and then around the, the board you have different emotions that you have turned at the beginning, it's random. And then let's say you have an emotion which is sad or happy and then it's related to a number. So I say, okay, me, I would feel number seven because it represents, let's say, sadness. And then I can decide the other players how they would feel depending on the situation. And then after we get the points, depending if I was right, if they were right or whatever. So it's really the only one that I found that is really built as a game and not as an educational tool. So the third game is uh, Memory Emotions. Uh, this game is really like a standard memory game where you have to turn two cards and make sure you have the pair. Uh, and this, this time it's about emotion, so you have to turn the person who's happy and the other person who's happy and then the sad person. Um, so we know that game, this is not nothing new. Uh, except this one is based on emotion, so you will have the emotion listed at the bottom. My only problem with specifically this game is the graphic. I really didn't like the graphic. For me, it was unclear on so many emotions. So if you don't know how to read, it's really hard to guess, even as a parent, to just look at the image and say, oh yeah, he's proud. 
because the drawing is they are not great for that and i think it based on the issue that there's so many emotions so compared to the first uh, game where you have only five emotions this one i think there is uh, i don't know 20 emotion or 25 emotion and I, I get it at the end it's really hard to represent an emotion on a card when it's not a picture or anything like this so for me yes and no because of the graphic if you have younger kids i do recommend just select uh five or six emotion at the time or discuss with the kids how the emotion looks like on the card what i did like about this game is they give you options so you just don't have to find the two uh, similar cards so you can find the girl and the boy for example or you can try to find the opposite like happiness and sadness so you can at the beginning explain to the kid what are the differences and what we're looking for so there's few options in that game however you yeah, have the graphic for me it's it's a little uh, <laughs> So it's a problem, but it's still a game uh, on emotions to teach emotions. So another game is Jouant avec les émotions. This is for me, is, I'm not sure it's, if we can categorize it as a game. It's really uh, built as flashcards for me, basically. So you have uh, the emotion on the card and then you can discuss with the kid what is that emotion because in the back of the card there's a nice definition of how to explain to the child what is being for example frustrated or what is being happy or excited or proud so there's a clear and simple explanation because sometimes it's hard as a parent to define concept with the kids I think this, these cards are really made for that. Additionally, at the bottom of the card, you have activity options. So the first one is always, let's discuss uh, the last emotion we felt. Let's discuss uh, in what situation we felt sad or happy. And then there's an activity, let's write, let's write about it, or uh, let's ex exchange with a friend, or what solution we can uh, have to solve this problem or this emotion. So it's really meant as a pedagogical tool, definitely in the form of flashcards. So another game, uh, La Planète des Émotions, I don't know if there's an English name for it. Uh, the game, it's another game from Placot. It's a game that is meant to teach the kids, again, how to recognize emotion because uh, you pick up a card, you look at the image and the action and you identify how the child is feeling depending on the action. So um, the cards are great. I think the emotions are still really well represented on these cards and uh, Placard, they added, compared to the first game, they added a few more emotions. I think we have 10 or 12 emotions, which are still really well represented in that game. Uh, the cards are great. It's really easy to see, oh, this kid is mad because he lost a piece on his puzzle or, or whatever situation. It's really um, interesting to have those cards to teach the kids. It's definitely a pedagogic game because the parent is not acting as a player. Unfortunately for me, that's the downside. Uh, you are more acting as a validator. Did your child recognize correctly uh, the, the, the emotion showed on the card? And for me, it's a, it's a little too bad that we cannot participate, but the goal is really for the kid to advance every time he managed to identify the right emotion. So at the end, he can identify the alien emotion that he would feel on earth. So yes and no, it's really meant as a tool. Um, other than that, it, it's really, the graphic, it's really what is great about it compared to other games that I've seen. This one is great for that. The other thing is, and I, I really uh, texted a placard for it because this game is meant for, I think, three or four years old until nine years old. And I was asking myself, do we still need a nine year old to teach our kids what is sadness or what is frustration? Uh, they told me yes, and I'm still wondering <laughs> if it's if this game goes on, on up until nine years old. I, I don't think so. Um, I think maybe some kids do need uh, kids with autism or, or, or kids that, that needs that emotional input. 
uh, I think it's a great game for that. It's really defined as a tool for me. Uh, there's a lot of uh, good things about this game and uh, you, can, uh, you can go and see it. So another game is Le Volcan des Emotions. And again, this is really not a game. It's really a, a tool. And I think it's a great tool. It, it's a tool that is built like a flowchart. <laughs> Uh, it sounds terrible, <laughs> it sounds like we're in a bad meeting, but the way it's built is really, um, if it's really representing how the kid feels. So let's say your child is feeling really sad or, or really uh, insecure, and then you can identify first uh, his emotion, then you are trying to bring him directly to a problem solving. And I think this is what's great, I think I'm still using this uh, with my teenagers, uh, not the game itself, but the process of trying to bring them from a dramatic uh, emotion that they're feeling to let's go into solution modes. And um, I think this it's work great. I think as adults, we tend to do that more naturally. I think this is a great tool for us to bring our kids to think this way, to think that, okay, I'm feeling really frustrated. My friend, they stole my pencils or my crayons. And then you can say, okay, you're feeling frustrated. What can we do to uh, calm your emotion? Can we go see somebody? So they're giving, this game is giving option as to what can be done. Can, do you need to see a teacher? Can you solve the problem by yourself? What, how, what can you do to make you feel better? So at the end of the flowchart, you're happy and you're, you're confident in, in your uh, solution and that you can fix the problem. So it's really uh, a tool, a great tool to bring your kids to problem solving. So another game is Les Emotions sur ma frimousse. Uh, this game is built as a storytelling emotion game, if I can say, where as a parent you're gonna tell a story. I think there is two stories in that game, so one on one side, uh, second on the other side. And then you have cards and the child has to identify what emotion uh, the kid is going through over the, the, the seven cards of, of, of story. Um, for me, the only problem, again, is the graphic. It's really hard to see that this is sadness or how they represent the eyebrow or the mouth. It is, it's, for me, it's not easy. I guess we're going to have to start with the kid and say, okay, when you have your eyebrow like this, this is what it means. However, other than the graphic, I like the idea of a storytelling uh, emotion because the other game that we've seen has only one situation, one emotion. I'm, I'm frustrated because somebody stole my crayons. In this case, you're going through an entire range of emotion. Uh, I think the story it's about um, a thunderstorm. So yes, you can be frightened at the beginning and then your emotion change over the course of, uh, of the story. And I like the idea that we can discuss that with the kids, that you don't have to stay, to stay uh, scared or frustrated or sad or... And you can change your emotion depending on what you're feeling, depending what you can do. And so uh, this is the first one about storytelling. I think it's also great. We can use those cards with other stories that we can bring because this one has only two stories. But I think you can use those cards in other stories and try to have your kids uh, identify the emotions and how the, 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 the people on, in the story are feeling. So I think this is a, a great game, a little maybe too small, uh, not enough stories, I would have liked more stories, but I like the, the storytelling uh, game on this. So another game is Marion Simon and their emotion, I, I guess. So this game is also meant as a, a a tool to teach them some emotion depending on some situation. So each kid's gonna receive their um, board with a series of emotion. I think there's 15 emotion or something. And then there's a card with a situation. For example, uh, Simon's father is bringing him to a baseball game for his birthday. And then he has to look into his board and find what the emotion will fit to it and then put it on uh, the card. Because in those cards, the kids, they don't have face. <laughs> Can, could be a little creepy, but it's 
for the kids to place the emotion on the on the right uh, image so that's for that there's also another board for girls so a boy and a girl um, board so I think they can relate more uh, again it's really hard to represent emotion when you have 15 emotion I think the graphic is okay it's really hard for me though I, I cannot blame the graphic I the graphist because it's hard to represent an emotion and I think it's really important as a parent if we want to use those cards when we have 15 or 20 different emotions that we go through the cards at the beginning and show them okay look this is for example um, sadness because you how you would make and maybe bring the kid in front of a mirror uh, because it's really hard and I really wish uh, some of those uh, games were developed with pictures um, it's much easier to see in a picture how the person feels than in, a, in an image or a drawing. However, I think this is good. It's, it, it's not a game, it's really a tool that you can use. I think it's great for schools um, to teach the kids and then they can choose and go put um, the image, the right emotion on the right situation. And I love there's a lot of different situations and I think it's great uh, to teach them like that. So another game is Mon Loto des Emotions from Fleurus. Uh, it's a game where you have multiple options. There is uh, five different cards where you're gonna have to pick up. So the child pick up a card, let's say he wants to learn how to concentrate better, or he wants to learn how to control his emotions or his frustration, let's say, or he wants to learn how to meditate. So there is five uh, different card like this. He's gonna take a card, open it, and then there is six actions. And then we're gonna shuffle the other cards. When you pick up a card that belongs to your, your board, you're gonna do the emotion on the card. So for example, if you took um, how to concentrate better, and then you pick up one of the card and it says, close your eyes and, and do something else. I, I don't recall exactly, but then the child will have to, as soon as he put the card on his board, he's gonna have to close his eyes and say how we can concentrate better. So it's really how to teach them um, how to manage those emotions. Um, the downside for me is this is a luck game so it's possible that you pick up cards and one kid's gonna have all his cards on, on his board and the other kid's gonna have none of the cards. Uh, this game also recommend to take two board at the time. I think it's really one board it's better. Maybe we can just remove some of the card from the pile, make sure that the kids they pick up these cards and they can action them and um, make the solution happen. Uh, a tiny other downside is some of the cards uh, require an action that takes time. For example, uh, go get something in the house, um, lay down on the floor, get ready, put a, a nice music and close your eyes. Let's say how to meditate. Uh, where the other kids is, okay, you need to concentrate. So just close your eyes and make three breath or deep breath. So this action for one kid could take five minutes and for the other kid, because it's a different card that they pick up at the beginning, could take 10 seconds. So this is a little uneven. However, I think you can use it not as a game, really as a tool where you say, okay, today we're gonna try to tackle um, how to control your frustration and we're just gonna play like this just for fun. I think it's, it's a great game to teach them how to uh, problem solve and, and, and things like this. Um, I really do think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great tool for that, not as a game, as a tool. <laughs> and finally, the last game is Funny Family Emotions. It's a game with the seven family game where you ask, uh, do you have the father of this family or do you have the mother of this family? Again, the problem for me is the graphic because it's the third game in the series, I believe. Um, however, uh, this time the graphic doesn't have a big impact because uh, you can ask, um, there's a color on the card, so do you have the mother of the sad family or do you have the father of the proud family? So you have colors, you don't necessarily need to look at the, uh, the drawing, you have codes and it's really well done for that. The other thing is this game has extra cards. They are identified with a star where you can ask questions like how would you feel in that or that situation? And then you can use your cards and, and try to get it out. So it's really also a tool as much as it is a game of the seven family uh, game for that. Basically, 
what you will do and, and the way you will learn the emotion is like, do you have the father of the proud family? Do you have the mother of the happy family? And, and without, so it's more built as a game. And this is what I like about this one. It's really built as a game where you don't necessarily focus on, I'm teaching you an emotion. It's really built as a game. You don't even have to think about it. And um, it's meant for that. So if you like the seven family games, I think you would enjoy this one. And if you want a tool to teach your kids emotion, you can also rely on that game. So that's it. That concludes my 12 uh, emotion games for uh, younger kids. I, I hope this helped you and that you will be able to find something for your need for your kids. Uh, if there are other games that you know, just put in the comment below. Uh, maybe it's going to help other people find uh, emotion games that they need. It's not for everybody. Uh, but if you need it, I'm sure you're going to find a nice game in those 12 that I presented to you today. So I see you later.